today I'll be talking about candle and oil burning carriage lamps. I have four examples of some lamps made by some pretty good well-known companies and the items that are needed to operate them and keep them in good working order. First of all, you're going to need a kit of tools and things to help you do that. Some of the things that you might want to have on hand for working with your carriage lamps are a small container of 3-in-1 or other household oil for oiling the hinges and other moving parts in your lamp, such as where the oil pots slide in and out of the lamps. Also some metal polish, a non-abrasive type is very much recommended so that we can polish the silver interiors without scratching. A small crescent wrench, a strap wrench in order to take out the oil burners and the candle caps which are often damaged when people try to use pliers and wrenches and such as that. Also a butane lighter and a snuffer come in very handy when you're trying to reach into the small confines on the inside of a lamp. A pair of scissors and a knife for, I use a paring knife for trimming the candles and fitting them into the lamps, trimming the wicks and keeping everything in order. I'm going to start out today with this candle burning lamp which was made by the White Manufacturing Company. Now the White Manufacturing Company was located in Bridgeport, Connecticut and it started in 1846. The White Company actually managed to make the transition into parts and pieces for the automotive industry today. Now this lamp mounts in a socket type mount on the carriage such as I have here. This part of the lamp is built up so it's quite heavy and substantial enough to carry the weight of the lamp and it fits into a socket like that. The spring then goes up in the bottom and the tail threads on and locks the lamp into in place. This lamp came as I bought it with a spring like this and you can see that that spring is going to be well short of the top of the candle cap when it is all assembled together. We actually need a spring more of this length in order to push the candle up all the way through the time that it's actually burning and use all of the candle. With the shorter spring, the candle will come up much short of the top of the candle cap and be wasted because it couldn't be burned all the way. Now this is the candle that was in this lamp and I burned it this morning for about four hours and used about three-eighths to a half of an inch of the candle. So you can see that this candle probably has another four, five, maybe six hours worth of burning time. So we're going to put it into the tube, the feeder tube, and I'm going to push it up in there with the spring. and lock it in place with the tail. Now I'm going to turn this lamp sideways as says it would be as it was mounted on the carriage so that I can get at the door and get inside. It takes the burner out from the inside of the lamp. You can see down underneath here there's a rod that goes all the way around except for a space right here. And that space allows you to drop it over a little hook in the lamp and tie it in so that it can't come out of the lamp and it holds the candle down. Now this candle has been burned and set into the lamp properly so that it feeds up into this candle cap and just goes right up around the bottom. What this serves to do is to make a molten pool of wax that is actually the fuel for the flame. And so this is a properly trimmed 
candle. It's got about oh, 3 eighths to a half of an inch of wick showing, which will burn. And as the candle burns, the spring will push it up into the candle cap, and we will be able to consume most of it in uh, lighting the lamp. So put that in there, a quarter of a turn, locks it in, and away we go. Now I'm going to use a butane lighter in order to light this candle. It's a whole lot easier than using a match. Just getting your hand in there and not getting burnt and so on and so forth. This lamp is designed with a lot of air holes. There's four big holes in the bottom and about 15 holes on the interior liner which allows air to come up from the bottom and feed the burner and then come out through the top. Now when we use candles in candle lamps, we use beeswax candles. Now these candles are commercially available. They come in lots of different sizes. This is a one inch, an inch and a sixteenth, an inch and an eighth, and an inch and a quarter. The most common by far is the inch and an eighth. It fits most this lamp and this lamp as well. Fits right up in there, feeds through to where it won't push all the way through and get caught in that candle cap. So there we have this lamp that was built by White Manufacturing. This lamp was made by Waldron Brothers Manufacturing in Boston, Massachusetts. The only date I have on Waldron Brothers is 1874 where they showed in an expedition and the catalog shows their products claiming to be uh, very high workmanship, good materials, and quality of design. And I have to say that in my experience all the Waldron lamps that I have worked on have certainly fit that bill. Very high uh, quality and uh, design of lamps. And they had some really unique features about them. In this case, the mounting bracket on the back you can see here is round on the top and D-shaped on the bottom. That configuration when mounted on the carriage disallowed the lamp from turning and in fact as the lamp jiggled and settled down on that it became tighter and tighter and would not move or get out of whack with the carriage. Now I just have a tapered pin here just for demonstration and, and this will hang on there fine. Again, this candle cap, well, it's a little tight. And so I can use this, which is a very inexpensive tool. It's adjustable to any size you want. And I can slip it right over the candle cap and just turn it and pull it right out of there. Once it gets loosened up, there it comes. A very handy item to have when you're working with your candle lamps. It's much better than using pliers that will crush and disfigure the candle cap and getting them replaced or repaired can be a costly uh, situation. So here's the tail for this lamp. And I'm going to put the cap in, give it a quarter turn so that it's locked in there. This again is a candle that has been in this lamp for a while and it's trimmed not only to fit the top of the candle cap but to fit the top of this spring uh, so that it won't move around and and get caught sideways or anything. It's an inch and an eighth candle and it fits in here very well. 
Sometimes these guys can be a bit long-winded. There we go. And now this candle is seated up against the lip in the cap. And I can light it as well. This lamp also is very well fitted out with air holes so that there's plenty of oxygen for that uh, burner to operate on. Now I mentioned the uh, snuffer here a little bit ago and this is one I built myself. It was just easier than trying to find one. You can find them commercially made. But the idea is that by putting it over the flame, it deprives the flame of oxygen and puts it out without disturbing the wick. So here's one that is maybe a little easier to see. So you can see that just by putting the cap over the burning candle, it deprives it of oxygen and allows it to go out without disturbing that wick, which is very fragile at this time. I know a lot of people just lick their fingers and pinch that and it, it works alright, but it often wrecks the wick and causes quite a bit of time to uh, get it back in order and, and get it the right length and so forth so it'll burn right. So a snuffer is a very good idea. I also use this pair of shop snips to trim the end of that wick and keep it all in good shape. These are some old springs that I've had around here in the shop for a while and you can see that they're covered with fabric which serves to quiet the rattling of the spring in this tube so or the tail or stem as it might be called. Now that fabric keeps the vibration down and as you can imagine makes it uh, a lot nicer for a horse that might be a little bit skittish or something. Cloth dampens the sound of the vibration of the spring in the tail. Now this one in particular has a woven sheath on the spring wire which also serves the same purpose. And you see a lot of these in old candle lamps. Unfortunately the uh, fabric on these oftentimes is deteriorated because of rust and uh, lack of uh, maintenance. You see that these all come in, in extra long lengths, but in a candle lamp you probably don't want anything more than uh, say two to four inches because you need room for the spring to work. You don't want to compress the spring so much that it actually takes the set out of the spring and you don't want to have so much candle in there that you just leave it and let it burn forever and ever and if you get a little problem where it's not uh, burning quite properly and some wax is going down uh, into the tube it can actually freeze that candle in the stem and make a real mess as far as trying to get it cleaned up and back in working order. So always trim your candles down to two to four inches depending on the size of the lamp. Oil burning lamps. This particular lamp was used and sold by Jubert and White. There is no signature in the lamp as far as the manufacturer goes, but there is a signature on the oil burner. And so my assumption in this case is that this lamp was made by another company and either directly on order to Jubert and White or Jubert and White actually bought the lamp and then it had their own name engraved in the oil burner. Now this lamp should take a tapered pin 
But just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put it in this collar. I'm going to remove it. And we're going to demonstrate a little bit here about using the oil burners. Now you see that the wick is longer than necessary to go in there, and that's good. We're going to take some regular cotton balls, like uh, you might use them for medicinal or cosmetic purposes, and I'm going to stuff it into the oil pot. You'll find many old oil pots with the remains of a fibrous or generally a cotton interior in them. When I fuel up these lamps, this one has already been fueled up, and I'm going to demonstrate a little bit here. Okay, can you see that black smoke? We don't want that. We want to adjust this down to where that smoke disappears. And if you notice, the color of the flame became brighter because there's more complete combustion there. See that? So, in order to fill these oil pots, you can take and pour it in. I use lamp oil. Do not use Coleman oil, or Coleman fuel, I should say. Coleman fuel is much lighter. It's uh, much more like gasoline, or white gas, if you will. It's, and it burns hotter and faster. It is not appropriate in carriage lamps. Now I use a syringe with a long tube on it to fill that, and it's a lot less messy, and I can be uh, more judicious with the amount of oil that I actually put in there. Now I'm going to put in about 12 or 15 cc's. And that should burn an hour, an hour and a half. Okay. Another advantage of using a syringe like that is that sometimes these oil pots are very difficult to get out of the lamps. Okay, I don't know if you can see the black smoke coming out of the top of the lamp, but we're going to adjust that wick down. So we have a nice little flame without producing smoke. Now one of the problems with the smoke is that it sits up the interior of the lamp and therefore cuts down on the efficiency of the light. Now here's this little lamp that has no name in it. I'm going to take my wrench and tighten it up a little bit. It wants to drop down too far on the mounting bracket. Now sometimes these are quite tight and getting them out is more of a problem than getting them in. So typically if they're really stuck, what I'll do is put a little bit of penetrating oil in around here, try to let it get down inside, and then I'll stick a steel rod up through the hole in the tail 
and tap on it and loosen it up and it'll usually come out that way. Now we've already adjusted this one so it shouldn't be smoking too much. All right. Now I have another pair of lamps here that was also made by the White Manufacturing Company. And I'm going to light that pair, so hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. Now these wicks have been trimmed up, and that's another thing I should point out, is that when you go into the ring to show a carriage, like a pleasure class or something like that, and you have lamps on your carriage, they should be ready to go. They should be loaded. In the case of candle lamps, the candle should be properly trimmed, properly sized, and the wicks burnt. I like those lamps with a minimum of fuss and bother. So these lamps are ready to go. They've been burned already. So the, the wick is ready to go. You don't have to worry about it getting started and getting adjusted. And there we are. I'm going to turn out the light. So this one looks like it could be adjusted down just a bit. And hopefully you can see how much brighter well-maintained silver interiors are than interiors that have been sooted up or, you know, older and not uh, able to uh, reflect the light as well. You also notice that the lamp reflects the color of the flame, and so your light is this pleasing golden glow, and in the dark of an evening, it's really quite beautiful to see that coming down the road. So, there's my little explanation of how to use oil and candle burning carriage lamps. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll share. Mm -hmm.